Um, I will try to get this through this as fast as possible. And why? Because I brought some people from my institution, two students. Uh, here they are. <laughs> it's more like, don't believe me, believe my victims. So you can ask these guys anything you like. Brit, my educational conscience, and Martijn, my uh, partner in crime. And they will be in the lobby and in the story, maybe something strikes you as strange, you can ask them anything, especially the students. Um, my school, my institute is about IT. And we have this proposition to the student, if you start to study with us, you can become anything in IT. And this proposition uh, made us design a curriculum where if anything happens, we have it into the lectures or into what's happening to the students within a week. And that's saying a lot. Uh, we started out with this, good education should happen in context. So a meaningful context makes learning very, very easy, but a context for every student is different. Beside the context of our uh, society is happening, for, uh, moving in a rapid breakneck speed. And if you want to know how fast that is, this man comes along. This is Gordon Moore, and his claim to fame, uh, he wrote a white paper in 1969, the year of the lunar landing, and it has become known as Moore's Law. And what he did, he looked at his product, the Intel CPU, and he saw that it was doubling of components roughly every 18 months. Right now it's about a year. And what it means is that everything that IT touches doubles every year. So every year, as much as possible as in the rest of history before. We people can't possibly keep up with that. So how I usually translate it, looking uh, forward four years, one batch of students, is like looking back 30 years. And I put for you on a timeline 20 years, not even 30. Try to imagine as a student, starting with your education, and in four years time, all this change is gonna happen. Can you remember a time before Google? Or a time before the mobile phone? Google is 19 years old. It's just, in our terms, not even ready to become a professional. We possibly can't keep up. So, this means we're educating for future problems we don't know yet. We're educating in the unknown. So we have to bring students to the end of the line with a very different set of skills and competences. This, what does this mean? Uh, this is something we all seen. And what it means is simply that personal IT has arrived. Everybody has it. All your students have personal IT and they know how to use it. They know how to find their stuff and to learn with it. And the next thing that has happened is that um, Information has become a commodity. So that is actually changing things. And what we saw is this. If you look at the learning pyramid, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, the most of the time a teacher spends is in the information layer. And that's not needed anymore. So we started out looking at a way to develop competences within students without addressing the information layer. The students can do that by themselves. And we developed this model if you look at competences, they should do one thing, they should be consistent. So if you draw it as a line, if you pull on the right side, the left side should move. So it should be a meaningful set. And if you're working in an environment you like to be, your development will probably look something like this. I think everybody recognized who studied. Most of the stuff you're very good at, some stuff not so good at, but at largely, you're doing really okay. What does education do? They're pushing there. Pushing deficiencies. And it means all the energy and motivation is bleeding away. In the Netherlands, there's a famous hockey coach. I don't know if everybody knows Mark Lamas. You know him? Yeah. He had this, this fantastic uh, women hockey team. And there was one lady who was perfect in the backhand but not so good at the forehand. And what did he do? He let her practice the forehand. And the net result was her backhand got worse. So he switched it around and said, go back to the backhand. And that is what we adopted. And it's called, come on, 
the strength-based competence uh, talent development curve. If you're pushing the top where everybody's good and a student wants to improve, they inevitably going to improve there also because they need it to level up what they're good at. And this is where we started off with and try to give us every student his own curriculum. And we designed something that a student is owner of his own content, his own tempo, his own style, his own data. Data came along earlier, but also his own didactics. So they're 100% at the steering wheel. What we use is this. The Domain Description Bachelor of ICT, it's a competence framework which is described uh, an ICT professional in every sense from the, the video editor you saw earlier with Robbie to the hardcore tech boys like your tier who can lift up one foot of a chip and make it do something else, hopefully. They create their own profile on how they want to develop themselves in their uh, competence profile. They design their own assignments. What am I going to do to prove these competences? And they even create their own criteria. How do I want to be tested? And now what Canvas is doing with this? We created a tooling set to make this possible. And if every student has to have their own uh, profile and their own curricula, we have 3,600 students, so we have 3,600 curricula. Every student creates his own curriculum. And what we do is this. Here you see my Canvas dashboard. On the left, we have a general guiding course. It's actually basically the same for every semester we have. And on the right, every student gets their own personal course. And this personal course, he or she collects everything it's ever been doing during the whole curriculum. So we can trace everything from what they've done, how they have been graded, what has the feedback been, and how the uh, development on the competences were. Let me walk you through. This is the semester guide uh, course, and we're giving editing rights to students. Does anybody do that, giving editing rights to students? They actually can change anything. Every uh, coach has their own personal course, in which they sell themselves to the students, and the students can pick the, co the coach they like. And magically, it always fits. Uh, we do the centralized feedback, so we have everything from all the process feedback from the students in this course. There is some guidance and we offer some workshops if there is a need. But we also let students create their own workshops and give them to the other students. And where it becomes interesting is the personal course of the student. And here the student not only has editing rights, he or she has owner rights. So they're creating their own course, and this course acts as a validated portfolio. Everything they do, they put in it, and they let it be graded by peers or coaches, or whatever. People from companies, uh, people who have internships with, everybody can grade them. And uh, you see, you saw Robbie talk about speed grader, you see it top left. And the difference is, we are not the ones creating this rubric. The student creates the rubric by himself. So he picks an assignment, says, I'm going to work on these parts of the competence profile, and I'm also de um, designing my own uh, criterions, and they describe when I think my assignment is done good. So we're not defining uh, done well, done good, done excellent. We only define done good. So the student's aim will always be on the good. Uh, where do we start with every semester? Every semester a student creates a plan and it's called a PDCP, Personal Dynamic Competence Profile. What is my competence profile for this semester? And it is dynamic because they can change it during the course. And what they do, and if you can read the competence profile you see what's happening up there, but what they do, they create their assignments and they create this rubric and they work with outcomes. Anybody using outcomes? I always am amazed so little people use outcomes. It's a very powerful tool. So these outcomes describe our competence profile and they just take out the stuff uh, they need. 
and it's competence-based grading what we do. So grades are on the way out, courses are on the way out, we eliminated classrooms, shadows are on the way out and we're changing the way teachers work. And why are grades on the way out? Because we grade everything on these key performance indicators from this uh, competence framework, we can actually visualize the competence growth of every student in the taste of what kind of IT professional he or she wants to be. And that's what you see on the top. The levels of it, so the type of IT professional we can visualize. If I talk to companies, they say, oh, so I can actually create the kind of IT person I want to have and you can show me which student has developed like that? Yes, we can. I can give you challenges we like our company to have students work on and you can create these challenges and show them what kind of challenges they are and the students who want to work on these challenges based on their peers, yes, we can. So these become perfect matches and give an excellent match of what a student is going to do. So company happy, student happy, more learning mastery. We then stop there. I'll give you a small peek into the, is this one. Uh, classrooms don't work in the system, so we stopped having them. We give students their own personal learning spaces and they can do with it whatever they want. Shadows don't work because every student can potentially do something different. And even with shadows, who says I'm done learning within two hours for this specific topic. So shadows have gone, courses have gone. What we're doing now is giving students a very powerful learning environment with uh, learning analytics. Jared has shown you something. We're trying to put it further and get biometrics to play a role in this. And we're not stopping there. There's one thing I noticed that's difficult in rolling this out. It's the teacher. And it has to do with this. If you want to do this, you have to trust your students. And if you don't want to know if this works, as I said before, and I hope I made enough tempo, ask my victims, they're here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>